UML Diagrams and Plant UML on IntelliJ. Rob Ford here, current MIT student at Virginia Tech, and for the next 15 to 20 minutes, I will be talking to you about creating UML diagrams using the Plant UML add-on in IntelliJ. If you're an IntelliJ fan and you're looking for a great UML creator option as an add-on to your IntelliJ integrated development environment, then you might be interested in what I have to show you. In the UML Basics section, we'll cover why Plant UML is a good option when choosing a UML creator and the UML diagram options available to you in Plant UML. In the Class Diagram Basics and Class Diagram Techniques sections, we'll cover a step-by-step -step guide on a very familiar UML class diagram. In this first section titled UML with Plant UML, I'm going to cover why we're using Plant UML and I will briefly cover the available UML diagrams in Plant UML. In each diagram example, I will cover the diagram type, provide an example of Plant UML syntax and a visual representation of that particular UML diagram and when it's best to use that diagram. There are a variety of UML diagram creators, some easier to use than others. IntelliJ even comes with a built-in UML feature, which is very intuitive. However, this does require some additional expenses via the professional version of IntelliJ. If you're not interested in spending those extra dollars, Plant UML is a cost-conscious option that provides you the same built-in feel. It's 100% free, and it's pretty darn simple to use. We start here with a sequence diagram. It is the most common type of interaction diagram, which describes how groups of objects collaborate in some behavior typically the behavior of a single scenario. The diagram shows Alice sending Bob an authentication request. Then Bob responds with an authentication response. This is done again below. Use sequence diagrams once you want to look at the behavior of several objects within a single use case. Sequence diagrams are good at showing collaborations among the objects. This example is a use case. Use cases work by describing the typical interactions between the users of a system and the system itself providing a narrative of how a system is used. We do this by describing a scenario. A scenario is a sequence of steps describing an interaction between a user and a system. In this example, we have a guest interacting with a restaurant and the professional person's chef and food critic. The guest eats food, drinks, and pays for food, while the food critic reviews the restaurant. The chef's interaction with the restaurant is not depicted. Now, if we were to show the chef's interaction, what might we add? Go ahead and take a moment to pause the video and think about what we might add. If you said something along the lines of cook food, you'd be correct. And here you see that we've drawn a line to the action cook food that we've inserted into the restaurant package. Remember, use use case diagrams when capturing the functional requirements of a system. Hands down, the most popular and widely used UML diagram is the class diagram. The class diagram is not only widely used, but also subject to the greatest range of modeling concepts. A class diagram describes the type of objects and the static relationships that exist among them. Cla class diagrams also show the properties and operations of a class and the constraints that apply to the way objects are connected. Class diagrams are the backbone of the UML. You will use them all the time. The problem with class diagrams is they can be filled with an endless amount of information and they can be a bit overwhelming to use. Some key tips to remember when creating a class diagram, and we'll implement these later in our class diagram example, don't try to use all the notations available to you. Start with the simple stuff, classes, associations, attributes, generalization, and constraints. Don't draw models for everything. Instead, concentrate on the key areas. It's better to have a few diagrams that are easy to maintain than an endless trove of diagrams that become forgotten, unupdated, and obsolete. In this example, we have an array list class with an object array named element data for its one field and a method called size that calls on an object class with the method equals. Remember, use a class diagram to show types of objects and the relationships. An object diagram is a snapshot of the object in a system at a point in time. Because it shows instances rather than classes, an object diagram is often called an instance diagram. The map object, capital city, shows several objects, 
UK, USA, and Germany, and their respective capital city objects. The UK object consists of another object named London. Use object diagrams to show examples of objects connected together. Another diagram that Plant UML is capable of depicting is an activity diagram. Activity diagrams are a technique to describe procedural logic, business process, and workflow. They play a role similar to flowcharts, but the main difference is that activity diagrams support parallel behavior. Use activity diagrams to show workflow and process modeling. In this example, the activity diagram is showing a conditional statement for color. If the color is red, then we want the action to print red. If it is not red, we want print not red. This is an example, but easy to understand activity diagram that shows procedural logic. Component UML diagrams depict a system broken down by components. What's a component? The straightforward answer is that a component is a system piece that is independently replaceable, upgradable, or purchasable. In the example, we have a sum, we have a sum group with two components, one linked to HTTP, another group with a component linked to an FTP that is also linked to the first component, and then the another component that is linked to the example component. Let's say maybe the cloud it looks like, and then connected to the SQL database. Since components are independently replaceable, we could replace the database with a different database type other than SQL. Use component diagrams when you are dividing your system into components and want to show the relationships through interfaces or the breakdown of components into a lower level structure. Deployment diagrams show a system's physical layout. These UML diagrams show what pieces of software run on what pieces of hardware. The main items on the diagram shown are a node connected by three communication paths to a component. A node is something that can host some software. Nodes come in two forms, a physical device or a virtual execution environment. In this example, the node contains an artifact, F1, artifacts being files such as executables, data files, configuration files, or HTML documents. Listing an artifact within a node shows that the artifact is deployed to that node in the running system. You can show artifacts either as class boxes or by listing the name with a node. Remember, use deploy diagrams to show what is deployed where. State machine diagrams are a familiar technique to describe the behavior of a system. In object-oriented approaches, you draw a state machine diagram for a single class to show the lifetime behavior of a single object. In this example, the object begins in the idle state, then transitions to the major ID state. A transition indicates a movement from one state to another. Each transition has a label that comes in three parts, trigger signature, guard, and activity. All the parts are optional. The trigger signature is usually a single event that triggers a potential change of state. The guard, if present, is a Boolean condition that must be true for the transition to be taken. The activity in some behavior that is executed during the transition. All three parts to a transition are optional. In this example, the required ID is the trigger signature, the guard is the ID Boolean statement, and the activity in this case is the recategorization of the ID as minor or major. Remember, use state diagrams when describing the behavior of an object across several use cases. Timing diagrams are the final UML diagram type that Plant UML is capable of depicting. Timing diagrams are another form of interaction diagram, this time the focus being on timing constraints, either for a single object or a bunch of objects. This example shows timing for a DNS resolver, web browser, and the web user. It starts with the DNS resolver in an idle state because both the web browser and the web user are in idle states. Once the web user enters a URL into the web browser, the web user changes to waiting while the web browser is processing. As shown in the timeline at the bottom, the 100 time mark, maybe this represents 100 nanoseconds, the web browser attempts resolution of the URL and the DNS resolver at the same time begins processing before finally resolving the domain name at the 700 time mark. Remember, use timing diagrams to show timing constraints between state changes on different objects. These diagrams are particularly familiar to hardware engineers. 
Okay, now we're going to begin a demonstration of creating a real class diagram in Plant UML using a very familiar example. In this example, we'll be using the River Game Engines, the project number two that we recently completed in Software Engineering Fall 2022 semester. Plant UML makes it easy to kickstart your diagrams. You must start and finish your diagram code with at start UML and at in UML. Without this, you'll receive an error. For this example, let's start by listing our package and inserting our interfaces, abstracts, classes, and enums within the curly braces of our package river. You'll remember from our recent project, we should have the interface game engine, the classes, abstract game engine, farmer game engine, monster game engine, game object, and the two enums, item and location. In plant UML, the positioning of the curly brace is important. The closing curly brace cannot be in the same last line of text to be included in your diagram. Otherwise, your UML diagram is replaced with an error screen. You must hit return at least once before typing your closing curly brace. In our case, we'll hit enter once to ensure the brace is on the line immediately under our location enum. Because nothing is inside the classes right now, the class curly braces can be on the same line. There are two different ways to show relationships in plant UML. I have used the implements and extends text to show the relationships between the interface abstract and the classes on the next screen will show how this appears. The other method uses arrows. You can find more information on this and other plant UML methods found in the link on the reference slide. Here, we see our diagram is depicted exactly how we expected. The abstract game engine implements the game engine interface and the farmer game engine and monster game engines extend the ga abstract game engine class. The implementation is denoted by a dashed line, whereas the extension is depicted using a solid line. See how both the game engine interface and the abstract game engine are italicized by plant UML to distinguish from regular classes. Now, let's add more detail to our classes. In particular, let's focus on the game object class as we work through adding variables and methods. All three variables are private and UML, plant UML, will automatically organize the variables in the first section in the game's UML box in the diagram. Here in plant UML's visualization of the game object and its variables. Now, let's add all the methods below. In the example of the constructor, we list the parameter types without the parameter names. This is a preference, but some class UML diagrams list parameter names as well. However, remember from the class diagram example early in the lesson, the two key tips when creating class diagrams are don't try to use all the notations available and don't draw models for everything. In this case, I want to keep this high level and understand the basic structure of the classes and what they contain. So we'll leave those out for now. And here's our example as displayed in plant UML. And you can see how plant UML automatically organized the variables and methods in two separate areas of the class box. Okay, now we have our game object class complete and we need to do the rest. I went ahead and fast forwarded here. I don't show the syntax because it gets a bit longer as you add all the class variables and methods, but here's the final product. While this does list all the information in a basic class diagram, it's a little hard to read and could be refined a bit, or should we say refactored. In the final section, we're going to simplify our class diagram of the river package and make this a very easy to read class diagram. As a reminder, here's what we have so far. Kind of jumbled. We're going to fix that with some colors, shapes, and standard characters that will replace some wording that's adding to the clutter. For this example, we'll hone in on the abstract game engine class to refine what we've got before applying it to the rest. Here's our syntax. We have a few variables and quite a few methods. Let's start by streamlining our types of variables. We'll start with the private type of variable. What we're going to do is change the word private to a minus sign. Plant UML displays the private variables when using a minus sign as a red square, as shown. Now let's go ahead and complete the rest of the variables and methods. Looks like we have two additional types, 
protected for variables and public for the methods. As you can see here, protected is replaced with a pound sign and public with a plus sign. Wow, look at how clean our abstract game engine class already looks, much better. We have red squares for the private modifiers, yellow diamonds for protected modifiers, and green circles for public modifiers. I'd also like to draw attention to the filling of the shapes. In plant UML, hollow shapes depict fields, whereas filled shapes depict methods. Now, let's go ahead and add the rest, and we should have a much more organized, clean-looking class diagram. Ah, yes, yes, much better. You can see that I've also added the public modifiers to the class. We're going to refine the class diagram a bit more by moving field and method names around and reorganizing. Here's where we left off our class diagram. And again, we're going to hone in on our abstract game engine to continue this example before applying it to the entire class diagram. Here's our abstract game engine class again. Let's see what we can do. We have our syntax, which is even a bit easier to read now. Let's make it even easier to read. How can we regroup the fields and methods to better organize our class? Let's pause and think. If you said by type of methods using setter and getter methods, that's definitely one way. Let's try to be a little bit more specific. Take another moment to pause and think. What I was looking for was accessor and mutator. First, we add two underscores on the line immediately underneath the last variable. This will create a solid line between the variables and methods. Even though plant UML does this by default, when you start adding other dividing lines like a dash line that we add next using two dots on the line immediately beneath abstract game engine constructor method, we must manually reinstate the field and method dividing line using two solid underscores. As mentioned, we've separated the constructor, accessor, and mutator methods using the dots. Additionally, we've moved all the types around the names of the fields and methods following a colon. This is actually common UML practice, but I waited to add this to show that you can easily copy your code into your plant UML prompt and then improve the diagram as you go. This should make our diagram look much better. Wow, look at how much those improvements help clean our class diagram. Now, let's take a look at the entire river package class diagram with other classes cleaned up as well. Yes, much better. Easy, simple, anyone could read this and understand what's going on in our river package. In summary, we've discussed why plant UML is a good choice. It is a quick and easy free add-on to use with IntelliJ. We talked about each of the UML diagrams available in plant UML. And then we covered an example of the river package class diagram as we walk through each step of creating this class diagram using the basics and refining the class diagram a bit. If you have any questions or are looking for additional information, links on the next slide will take you to the references used in creating this presentation. The two references for this presentation are plant UML in a nutshell at https plantuml.com and UML Distilled Third Edition, A Brief Guide to the Standard Object Modeling Language by Martin Fowler. Thank you for joining me for this presentation. I hope you enjoyed it and took away some useful tips on creating plant UML diagrams.